Shalom semuanya, apa kabar? Selamat datang di Live House Service setiap hari Minggu Kembali lagi bersama saya Deni Dan saya sangat senang bisa bertemu saudaraku sekalian di minggu yang luar biasa Di series yang baru pastinya di bulan ini tentang healing Berbicara tentang healing akan terjadi dalam berbagai macam bentuk Entah itu secara fisik, bahkan secara spiritual Dan nanti kita akan bersama-sama mendengarkan message yang luar biasa juga Tapi sebelum itu mari kita bangkit berdiri Mari kita semangat karena kita akan puji Tuhan Bersama-sama dengan lagu original dari Live House Mari kita puji Tuhan bersama-sama sekalian Bapak Ibu saudaraku sekalian untuk kita berdoa Mari kita berdoa Terima kasih Tuhan Yesus Terima kasih Bapak di surga Terima kasih roh kudus untuk minggu yang luar biasa ini Tuhan Sebentar kami akan terus memuji dan mendengarkan tentang firmanmu Oleh karena itu kami berdoa biarlah kami dipenuhi dengan sukacita yang luar biasa daripada Tuhan Biarlah pengharapan kami kami hanya berikan kepada Tuhan Terima kasih dalam nama Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa Haleluya amin Yeay, kita akan puji Tuhan lagi Jangan kemana-mana Pastikan untuk selalu siap 
Karena kita akan memuji Tuhan bersama-sama lagi Let's go! Kita offering atau kita tithing Kita di live house mengencourage teman-teman semua Untuk bisa memberi bersama-sama Dalam membangun pelayanan Tuhan Di tempat ini 
Oleh karena itu sebelum kita offering saya akan membacakan satu ayat Yang terambil dari 2 Korintus 8 ayat 9 Tapi kita baca versi BIMK nya Sebab kalian mengetahui betul bahwa kita sangat dikasihi oleh Yesus Kristus Tuhan kita Ia kaya tetapi ia membuat dirinya menjadi miskin untuk kepentinganmu Supaya dan kemiskinannya itu kalian menjadi kaya Saya percaya bahwa firman ini mengingatkan kita untuk terus uh, memberi Untuk terus uh, semangat dalam membantu pelayanan Karena kita percaya bahwa Yesus telah menanggung semuanya itu dan membuat kita menjadi kaya Oke sebelum kita memberi mari kita berdoa Terima kasih Tuhan Yesus untuk pengorbananmu yang luar biasa Terima kasih engkau boleh menjadi Miskin supaya kami menjadi kaya Tuhan Kami berdoa biarlah sebentar jika kami memberikan persembahan kami Biarlah itu menjadi berguna dalam pelayanan Tuhan Dan bahkan uh, menjadi berkat untuk pelayanan Tuhan Kami siap memberi, siap yang hati yang memberi Tuhan Engkau berkati dalam nama Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa Haleluya, amin Ada beberapa cara untuk memberi Teman-teman bisa transfer lewat bank account di bawah ini Dan bisa juga scan krisnya Dan teman-teman bisa menghubungi nomor di bawah ini Selamat memberi dengan penuh sukacita dan dengan kemudahan hati. Oke, okay, berikutnya lagi uh, kami dari Lab House uh, karena ini awal bulan kita mengajak teman-teman semua untuk uh, perjemuan bersama-sama. Karena perjemuan itu tersendiri juga adalah lambang di mana kita mengingat kebaikan Tuhan Yesus yang telah mati di atas kayu salib 2000 tahun yang lalu untuk menanggung dosa kita. Teman-teman bisa mempersiapkan seperti saat ini. Saya sudah mempersiapkan roti dan minuman Apapun minuman yang teman-teman pakai Apapun makanan yang teman-teman pakai Bisa dipakai semuanya Karena kita percaya bahwa Semua um, uh, media Tuhan pakai Untuk menolong kita dalam pelayanan Pertama-tama kita bisa mengambil roti Roti ini adalah lambang ten- uh, tubuh Yesus Kristus yang telah ia hancurkan di atas kayu salib Yang dia korbankan untuk menyelamatkan kita Saya percaya ketika kita memakan roti ini Akan memberikan kita kesembuhan secara jasmani dan uh, terlebih lagi kita mengingat kebaikan Tuhan yang telah mati di atas kayu salib. Mari kita bersama-sama mengangkat roti di tangan kita dan kita uh, berdoa kepada Tuhan supaya Tuhan memulihkan hidup kita dan kita selalu diingatkan bahwa Tuhan baik dalam kehidupan kita. Terima kasih Tuhan kami boleh mengangkat roti ini Tuhan sebagai lambang tubuhmu yang hancur di atas kayu salib yang kau korbankan Tuhan untuk menebus kami dari dosa-dosa kami Tuhan. Kami mau memakan roti ini Tuhan dan kami mengingat kebaikan Tuhan dalam kehidupan kami. Kami mau makan bersama-sama. Mari kita makan bersama-sama. Teman-teman juga bisa mengambil minuman, entah itu anggur, entah itu teh, entah apapun itu. Kita percaya bahwa semuanya dipakai Tuhan untuk mendapatkan kebaikan buat kita. Mari kita angkat minuman ini sebagai lambang terdarah Kristus darah yang telah tercurah di atas kayu salib untuk menembus dosa kita dan menjadikan kita kudus, menjadikan kita suci dan menjadikan kita utuh. Saya percaya ketika kita meminum ini lambang darah Kristus akan menyucikan seluruh hidup kita. Dan firman Tuhan berkata bahwa ketika kita minum Darah Kristus maka semua kesakitan kita semua luka kita akan dipulihkan Tuhan oleh bilur-bilur Tuhan kita semua Mari kita bersama-sama mengangkat minuman kita Terima kasih Tuhan Yesus untuk darah yang kau curahkan di atas kayu salib Terima kasih untuk pengorbananmu yang luar biasa Tuhan atas hidup kami Kami mau minum darahmu hari ini Tuhan sebagai lambang uh, kekudusan, lambang kesembuhan, lambang pemulihan dalam kehidupan kami Tuhan Karena kami percaya dengan minum darah ini Tuhan kami mengingat kebaikan Tuhan dalam kehidupan kami Terima kasih Tuhan Yesus engkau Allah yang baik dalam kehidupan kami Mari kita minum bersama-sama Oke sekarang kita mau mendengarkan message yang luar biasa Pastinya saya percaya ketika kita benar-benar berserah kepada Tuhan Itu akan memberikan kita kekuatan yang baru untuk menjalani kehidupan kita Mari kita bersama-sama mendengarkan message yang luar biasa ini Hello everyone, how are you? It's Pastor Rod here in Tokyo and we're doing a new series in July on God's healing power. I love I love this topic. This is one of my topics because God has healed me of so much. I've, I've received physical healing, emotional healing, healing in my past. Wow, healing everywhere. And I love to share this with you. And today we're going to just going to talk about this 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 question of of God's desire to heal. One of God's names in the Old Testament is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And so 
as I go around the world and people say, what sort of God is God? What sort of Jesus is Jesus? I say he's a, he's a healing God. He's creator God. He's savior God. But he is a healing God within his name and his character is actual healing. When he comes close, there is healing. There is something really, really good. I'm going to share my story at the end of this message, but I want to share right now one story from the Philippines. I've got a lot of stories from around the world um, because I've prayed for a lot of people. It doesn't make me great, it makes God great, but I have had the opportunity to pray for people. One of them was in southern Philippines in a city called Butuan. And in this city, we were doing outreach, we were starting a church and uh, starting small groups. And this family came begging and said, please, would you come and pray for our boy who's dying? He's he's going to die. And so um, we went there and uh, it was was in the heat of the day. Uh, We got there, it was a little hut. It was no more than a hut, like a thatched hut. Maybe there was some cardboard around. And I said, where is he? And he said, he's in the back, sort of back area. And so I had to get on my hands and knees, really hot day, really, really steamy hot inside there. It just got hotter and hotter. And I crawled through the crawl space into a back room. And all of a sudden, I saw this poor boy. This poor boy had boils all over his body, head, arms, as much as I could see, he was filled with these lumps and he was looking like he was going to die. It was just really, really critical. And, 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 and I, I just prayed for him. I said, Jesus, I pray for this boy. I pray for healing. I'm praying with all my heart and asking God to touch him and healing. And I just looked at him and I didn't see anything change except maybe his eyes sort of fluttered a bit like, like he was receiving something. And I prayed again and and then I, I just really had a, a flash to say to the parents, here's some money, go and buy some green vegetables. Go and make soup and feed him some broth. Just because they said he hadn't eaten for days, like he was really going to die. And so uh, I gave them a bit of money and they, I, I went out and I said, I'll come back tomorrow. And I came back the next day. And as I came to their little, their little hut, their little, ter- just, just, just in a terrible situation, um, I came to the house, there was nobody around. I passed by a, a basketball court. Some boys were playing basketball on a little half court. And I got to the house, there was nobody there. And I, I called out and there was no answer. And I crawled through the crawl space and I got to the back room and he wasn't there. He wasn't, there was nobody in the house. And I honestly thought the worst thought, you know, like maybe he died and they're at a funeral or something. Like that's, this, is, this is my level of faith right now. Like, whoa, what's going on? He just wasn't there and I... I came out of the house, crawled out, and I, I called on a neighbor and I said, where is this family that lives here? And they said, oh, they're at work. I said, well, what about the boy? What about the boy? And they said, oh, he's over there. See the boy playing basketball? That's him. <laughs> and he was actually healed. Praise God. There was no boils. I mean, he's actually playing like, like with energy and strength and healed and I saw a miracle, the healing power of Jesus. I love Jesus. I love his healing power. And I will always say it, even though some people may not find their healing, I'll keep praying, I'll keep believing, because that's what we're supposed to do. Now, I want to tell you a story from the Bible that I love very much. It's a a leper. A leprosy is in in the Bible is not necessarily what we call leprosy, but it's a skin disease serious enough that they are cast out of their community so a husband is cast out from his family or a wife or the child they're actually removed from the family because it was also seen as an issue of sin now we know today that's absolutely false but that was a view not of jesus but in the new testament times and so we come to this story where in mark chapter one right at the beginning of the gospel of mark and and it says now a leper came to Jesus came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now, there's so much in this first sentence. First of all, this leper had a lot of guts to turn up in public in front of the famous new rabbi Jesus, in front of everybody, in front of the community and and fall down and speak to him as though he had self-esteem. Speak to him as though he was a real person. Now, of course, I'm using sarcasm here because he is, but that was the attitude of the society 
that he was not even supposed to be in the open area. He was not even supposed to talk to a rabbi or talk or be in any area, but he was desperate. He was hungry. And I love this man already because there is a desire to be healed. I knew that desire when I came to Christ. I wanted to be healed of so many things. I wanted to come to Jesus and cry out, help me. I need help. Would you help me? Can you help me? Will you help me? And so, although I've never had leprosy like this man, I I feel I, I relate to his level of gutsiness, his level of openness, his level of not caring what others think anymore. I need to be healed. I sort of understand his heart and see it. And I want to say, this man would have had over his life the words leper and sinful man. Over his life, there would have been names put over him absolutely identity names put on him that in his own heart he knew was not true come on everyone we know god can break identity names we know god can do this and god wants to do it which is what this story is all about and so he comes to jesus and he says if you are willing you can make me clean now straight away he doesn't ask do you have the power to heal me This is the first thing. He's actually coming with a revelation that Jesus actually has the power. And we know that God has the power to heal us because God is a creator. And God created our being. It says in in, in Psalm 139, He created my inmost being, my DNA. He, He created everything in me. God is a creator and God is a healer. Jehovah Rapha. God, nature is healing. So his question to Jesus is not, do you have the power to heal me? That question was already solved or settled in his heart. But the question he comes with is something different. Now in Mark, it says that as soon as he'd spoken immediately, sorry, Jesus moved with compassion. This is verse 41. Jesus moved with compassion. Now this, this, this story is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All three eyewitnesses to the gospel talked about this story or, or heard about this story and wrote it down. It was an impacting story that a leper would come and and so arrogantly before everyone say, if you're willing, you can make me clean. You've got to understand a a person from a low class background back in Jesus' day saying that looks arrogant, but it's not. It's just desperation. It's a different attitude. And I believe that God wants us to have this attitude. And Jesus moved with Compassion. Now, this word compassion means guts. It is actually the, the New Testament word for gutsiness or guts. Deep, deep, deep level uh, compassion is guts or intestines. That's the word. I, I'm not making this up. This is real. It's, it's the word Jesus feeling it deep in his intestines, in his guts. Jesus moved with compassion. I love that because God has compassion for us. Amen. God loves us and he wants to heal us, which is what this story is all about. Jesus moved with compassion, reached out and touched him even before he said anything. This is amazing. It shows to me that God wants to touch us before he wants to heal us. In other words, God wants to do something in all of our life, in our mind, our heart, our body, the touching power of God. So Jesus comes up and even before he answers the question, he touches him. Now, now Jesus is not supposed to touch this man. In their day, you're not supposed to touch these sort of people, these people. There's something really, you know, you've got to stay away. And if you touch them, you become defiled and you need cleansing, which could take a number of days. Like it's quite a serious thing to touch someone like this. But Jesus doesn't care about any of those human rules. Well, he does care, but he's not going to obey them. He is the Lord of of humanity and he's going to come and touch whoever he wants to touch let me tell you i have seen people touched by the power of god from every religious group in this world that i know from from all over asia i've been all over asia and all over oceania praying for thousands and thousands of people from all different religions and i've seen thousands touched by jesus thousands touched because he loves them why does jesus heal because he loves Doesn't it mean that they need to have some faith first? Well, don't know. Doesn't it mean they need to be a Christian first? No, that's definitely not the the answer. The answer is God heals because God loves. And Jesus loved this man. 
and immediately wanted to bring touch into this environment of rejection. Into this situation, Jesus is just saying, wherever he touched, let's say he touched him on the hand. It doesn't say, it just says he touched him, probably, probably hand or arm. And it showed this man immediately acceptance, warmth, compassion, humanity, love. It, it, it just meant so much for this man without touch to be touched. And I think that we need to have a heart ready in worship and prayer and Bible reading to be touched by a loving Jesus. Jesus touches whoever comes. I have discovered this. As I said, many different religions have come and they've said, I don't believe in, I don't believe in Jesus, but can he heal me? I've had this many, many times. And my answer is yes. He's a healing God. In fact, when we lived in Thailand for four years, my message to the villagers of Thailand was, there is a, a creator God who wants to heal you, and his name is Jesus, and he also wants to forgive you. So healing is way up front in a lot of cultures of the world. And so Jesus doesn't even ask the backstory of this guy. Like, there's, no, there's no counseling here. It's not like, well, how, sir, how did you get leprosy and how long have you had it? Did your parents have No, Jesus doesn't care about the backstory in the sense of healing. Jesus does care about backstory, but that's for healing for other things, which we're going to talk about in future weeks. God healing the mind, the heart, the, the internal, that's coming. But here right now, God wants to heal without talking about the backstory. Now, this is really important. And when I was in Thailand, there was a terrible disease back then called HIV, AIDS. And I had to go to many, many people and pray for them. And I was very cautious and very, it was a significant thing, but I had to pray for a lot of people. And the issue of backstory doesn't count when you're facing a person dying or you're facing a person in agony. It doesn't matter how they got it. It matters what God wants to do. Amen. Let's give God a, a big praise. And I prayed for many people with AIDS and some were, were apparently healed and some were not. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to say God wants to heal irrespective of our past. What a good God is Jesus. Hey, isn't he wonderful? He's just amazing. And, and so Jesus finally speaks. And here's his words. It's actually two words in the Greek, only two words. One word, I am willing, which is what Jesus says, is just one word, thelo. You don't need to know Greek, but it's just one word. It's, it's like so short. This, this Jesus' whole answer is in one word, thelo, which means I want to. <laughs> I want to. I want to. Does Jesus want to heal us? Yes. Why would we be any different than this leper? Why would we be in any condition different? And this is where we need to be careful. We don't become victims and think, well, other people can get healed, but not me. I think we need to open our hearts to God and say, I believe you can heal me, and I believe you want to heal me, Thelo. And this next word is be cleansed, which is God acting on us. So the leper doesn't heal himself. The leper needs a supernatural invasion of God's power. When God healed me, I didn't heal myself. I just allowed God to come in and do a miracle in various parts of my life. I don't heal, but I believe He heals. This is really important because our attitude is be healed, be cleansed, a supernatural moment, a supernatural change. I believe it in Jesus' name. It's coming our way. Amen. So Jesus says, I am willing, be cleansed, which is another one word. So Jesus has very few words when it comes to the answer. It's not, it's not a big long rationale about, you know, well, you know, logic here and rational there and these scriptures. No, it's just willing cleansed and i think that we need to have the simplicity of saying god if you're willing you can heal me and wait for his healing touch you now there's it's just something about jesus that represents god god is jehovah rapha hebrews 1 3 says the son jesus is the radiance of god's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word what what sort of god is god well look at jesus Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. Jesus and the Father are one. And, and, so, and so this whole thing is, what is God like? What is God's heart like? He is represented by Jesus in this story. So I'm going to ask some questions and I'm going to come to my final story. The questions I'm going to ask, are, it's a bit hard actually. 
Because I don't have the answers for these questions. Number one is, so why aren't all healed? I get this all the time. I've been a pastor for 40 years. I, I'm used to this question. I'm ready for this question. I, my answer is, I don't know. I really don't know. But I know some are healed, and I pray for that. Why are some healed instantly and some not? I don't know. I've seen both. I've seen both. I've seen some people healed instantly, like that little boy in Butuan, who the next day was truly healed. It was truly healed. And I've seen other people over a period of months get healed. And so I, I don't know. But I pray, for pe- I pray that people would have tenaciousness in their heart to keep desiring healing. Is it a backstory? Is the reason why I'm, I'm sick or, or not healed? I don't know. Is it DNA? Is it my family? Is it uh, um, something I did? Is it, in this case, was it a sin? I don't know. But you see, God is not asking for the backstory. He's asking for our hearts. And I think it's really important that we get this correct in our lives. So if someone's not healed, it doesn't mean they're sinful. Someone is healed doesn't mean they're not sinful. Those things are not involved with this. I don't understand it, but I don't know. But we're not going to bring it down to cause and effect. Sometimes it could have that, but I don't know. I'm not a doctor. and I really don't know. But this is what I do know. and This is as a spiritual leader, as a, as a pastor of all these years. This is what I do know. You ready for this? I do know I'd rather be in a church a community that believes in healing. I'd rather be with pastors that pray for the sick and everyone who prays for the sick. I'd rather be in a church that believes in the healing power of Jesus. I'd rather be in a church praying for the sick. I'd rather be in that environment. I'd rather be reading the word for what it says that Jesus says, I am willing to be cleansed. I'd rather be that. Secondly, I'd rather stay in hope and believe for healing moments. What does that mean? It means if you haven't been healed yet, I believe there could be a healing moment. That's why we're going to in a moment take communion. I believe it's a healing moment every time I take it. I believe in healing moments. I believe in whether it's instantaneous or a journey of healings, like could be a hundred mini healings, micro miracles, whatever we want to call it. I believe in moments of healing because I believe in hope. I believe there is a hope that God wants to heal us. And the last thing I want to say is I'd rather pray for healing more often. And if I pray for healing more often, I'm going to see more healings. I do know that. I do know that, that the more people you pray for, the more healings they will experience and you will experience it's all about keep on praying it's all about there's an opportunity let's pray again and let's pray again and someone says i've been prayed for and we say we can pray again can believe for healing moments if they're not healed there's no judgment there's no issue we're not talking about backstory we are talking about a moment where god could heal us again so let me tell you about my story it's going to take a few minutes as we finish And I'm going to take communion with you. So where you are, if you'd like to get a little bit of um, juice of some sort and a little biscuit or something. I've here got some Japanese tea because I'm in Japan and a rice cracker because I'm also in Japan. And um, this is what we do in our church. Some people say, "Why why do you do that? And my answer is, well, the Japanese don't really like the grape juice. They say it tastes like medicine. And I actually agree. So when I was living in Thailand, we used to use Coca-Cola and sticky rice. And in Japan... Why do we do that? Because I think when Je- if Jesus was here in Japan with us, he'd love to do this. In fact, 500 years ago in church history, the early Christians used Japanese tea and rice cracker. So that's the why. It's not what we use, it's the heart. So in, in my story, I'm going to talk about how I was healed in my left hand. Now I'm left-handed, so I play sports. I used to play a lot of racket sports, squash and tennis and uh, also left, left-handed, left I write a lot with my left hand. And, and, and all of a sudden, I began to get these terrible blisters in my left hand in early 20s. A younger Christian. I just, just it blew up. And, and if, if those blisters broke, there was, there was water. It was very embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing. And um, I, I, it was painful. It was red and it was just breaking. And it was just all over every finger and, and all over the palm. And my right hand was fine. Isn't that weird? But it was my left hand. And, and I had this terrible outbreak of what, what was later called psoriasis. And so um, there's this, this terrible thing uh, in my hand, which the doctors later said was DNA, was caused by family background. Don't know about that, but that's what they said. And so 
um, here I am. And also I was a young medical professional. I was selling, uh, well not selling, I was t talking to doctors about our drugs. And so as a young man, I was in my early 20s, believed in Jesus, I started to see communion as an, a moment that God could heal my hand. And so here's a scripture. I'm going to share some scriptures with you as we start to get ready to take communion together. If you'd like to get some, some drink and something to eat. It says here, 1 Peter 2.24, He, Jesus, bore our sins in His body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness because by His wounds we've been healed, which is from Isaiah 53. And so the concept is, I believe that by Jesus' wounds, His stripes, His whips, there was a healing power made available in the atonement, in the cross and resurrection. I believe that. I believe that. So as a young Christian, my hands blowing up and all these problems, I would come to church every Sunday. We had, used to do communion every Sunday. That's an interesting thought. And I would take these things and I would say, Lord, all of this goes into all of me. All of this food and drink all, goes into all my cells. If it's healthy food and drink, it's going to go to all my cells. And I believe that as I take it, your healing power can flow into my whole body, including my left hand. And so every Sunday I would come and with expectations I would take it. We're going to take it in a moment together. I would believe every Sunday a, a healing moment, and, but I'd go home disappointed. But you know what? I believe there was always next week. I believe there was always next communion. And I never gave up. Now, this went on for one year and there's no improvement in my left hand. People, you know, people, why don't you give up, Rod? Like, why don't you? Well, it's, oh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just DNA. It's just... And, and I could have, and, and, and God would still have loved me, right? But I just really wanted to be healed. And it was embarrassing. And I'm left-handed. And I really wanted healing, and I was really desperate. I said, God, I believe you have the power, and I believe you want to heal my hand. So 18 months later, or, or one and a half year after the beginning, it's still bad. It's no better. Not even a bit better. Like you think, well, is it a journey? No, it's not even better. And so it's, it's just a terrible situation. And as a medical rep, I spoke to doctors and medical specialists in the skin area, because that's my job, or was part of my job. And I said, hey, doc, you got, any, you got any medicine? Any new medicines coming on the market? And they would give me some samples. And I don't know if they're supposed to, but anyway, just simple little samples. And, but nothing worked. So I'm not against medicine. Not, I, praise God for doctors and medicine. Praise the Lord. It's, it's an amazing moment to be alive, right? But I wasn't healed. And so I, I, one and a half years and, and heading towards two years, and I'm still going every Sunday communion. I'm believing for a healing moment. Now, it was two years after it first started. And there's one day, one Sunday, everything changed. I took the communion as normal. I looked at my hand as I did every, every week. It looked the same. But that particular night, two years after, I noticed at night, on the Sunday night, I noticed the redness had left my hand. I still had blisters, but I noticed that something significant had happened. And the next morning when I woke up, there was no blisters and no redness, and it never came back in these 38 years or whatever it is. Isn't that amazing? Give God a big praise. Now, I've got to be careful. This is not works. It's asking God to heal me Again, is everyone okay with that? It's not like I worked it up for two years. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I stayed in the concept of healing moments. So as we finish, I want to say to you, God wants to heal you. He can heal you. He has the power to heal you. He has the heart to heal you. The guts to heal you. He wants to touch you. He wants to speak to you. And right now is an opportunity for healing. I don't know anything else, but we just keep praying. So we're going to pray right now that communion is all about Jesus. Jesus went to the cross, died for us. He was whipped and beaten, shed his blood, rose again after three days. And what we do is we celebrate what he did for us. So we're going to take the little bit of cracker first. So if you've got a little bit of biscuit there, if you want to just run and get something, or if you've got a biscuit, you can use whatever because it's not the emblem, it's the heart. Remembering what Jesus has done for us. You ready? I'm going to pray and give thanks to Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you suffered for us. 
You were whipped and beaten and put on the cross. And Lord, by your stripes, we're healed. That's what your word says. And I pray right now for healing power. As we remember you, we remember the cross and the resurrection. And we take this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's pray for healing and divine restoration in Jesus' name. Jesus, you shed your blood. We drink this, this Japanese tea in remembrance of your sacrifice and your resurrection. I'm praying for healing power in every part of our life as we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Let's drink together. Oh, that's very nice. We like Japanese tea. And let's just pray for anyone that would like to receive Jesus into your heart right now. You know who you are right now. You're believing in Him and something's happening or you've been away. You want to come back. Let me pray for you right now. I'm going to count to three. You ready? One, two, three. Lord, I pray people's hearts would be open to receive your forgiveness and your love and your purpose and your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Wah, message yang luar biasa banget. Saya ketika mendengarkan message-nya itu memberikan saya peneguhan, keberanian, pengharapan bahwa Tuhan kita memang luar biasa dalam kehidupan kita. Ya teman-teman setelah message yang luar biasa kami juga ingin menyampaikan beberapa informasi kepada teman-teman sekalian yang pastinya. Yang pertama ada live house DNA yaitu buat teman-teman yang penasaran tentang live house segala sesuatu tentang budaya live house teman-teman bisa klik link di bawah ini dan teman-teman bisa pelajarin semuanya. Dan jika teman-teman ingin bergabung menjadi bagian dari live house teman-teman bisa hubungi nomor di bawah ini. Kami juga menginformasikan kepada teman-teman sekalian bahwa di Live House kita punya yang namanya Connect Group. Untuk saat ini kita punya Alpha Course, di mana kita belajar tentang kehidupan, belajar tentang banyak hal, tentang pengharapan, tentang uh, memiliki hidup yang bermakna, dan itu diadakan di Ibis Hotel setiap jam 12 habis kebaktian. Kami rindu teman-teman bergabung bersama-sama dengan kami di sana. Wow, suatu minggu yang luar biasa dan kami tidak sabar untuk melihat teman-teman lagi minggu depan pastinya di kebaktian live house setiap hari minggu. Saya Deni undur diri dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Semoga teman-teman semua memiliki minggu yang luar biasa. Sampai jumpa.